Thank you, Natalie, and a very good afternoon to you wherever and however you're listening to Talk Sport at the World Cup. Well, the African nations have suddenly arrived at the tournament in the last 24 hours. Morocco beating Belgium yesterday. Cameroon coming from 3-1 down to earn a very creditable point in the game you heard just now against Serbia over on Talk Sport 2. But in fairness, Ghana were the first African team to score at this World Cup, and they very nearly snatched a 3-3 draw against Portugal. Now they take on a South Korean side. They held Uruguay to a goalless draw in their first game, and they make three changes, Paolo Bento's team, from that which earned the draw against the South Americans. Here's their lineup. Kim sung gyu is the goalkeeper. Four more Kims in defence from right to left. Kim Moon Hwan, Kim Min Jai of Napoli, Kim Yong Gwan and Kim Jin Su. Then Bam Im Pyeong and Yong Woo Young are the defensive midfielders. Kwon Shang Hoon brought in. So too Yong Woo Young and Sun Jung Min of Spurs in behind Cho Gwe Sung. A much taller physical presence up front for the South Koreans. As for Ghana, the change in system and a change in personnel as well. Jordan Ayew of Crystal Palace is brought in for a start. So too is Tariq Lamptey. And Gideon Mensah also comes in at left-back. He plays his club football in France for Auxerre. Lawrence Atiziggy is the goalkeeper. Tariq Lamptey, Daniel Amate, Mo Salisu and Gideon Mensah in the back four. Salis Abdul Samed, Thomas Partey and Mohamed Kudush in midfield. And the two Ayew brothers, Jordan and Andre, along with Inyaki Williams, up front and we have some English interest in this game because Anthony Taylor is taking charge of this fixture and we'll see whether the South Koreans can force a shot on target one thing we know about Ghana is that they score goals but they concede too if you're the sort of guy or girl that goes for both teams to score in a game this might be the one for you we're underway on talk sport South Korea in there striking all red strip with a bit of black trim Ghana in all white and they're kicking from right to left as we look Ghana away from their vociferous and very colourful support wearing the red yellow and green jerseys plenty done up in full face and body makeup whilst the South Korean supporters at the other end so many are bedecked in masks in tribute to their talisman Song Jung Min long throw comes into the Ghana box it's looking for Cho Gwe Sung but it bounces out of play and it'll be a goal kick to Ghana away to our right hand side Dean Ashton we'll see who gets control of midfield first of all because we've got a kind of a clash of systems it could be a 4-2-3-1 against a, a 4-3-3 here yeah it could and I just think Thomas Partey is so pivotal to how Ghana play I think the, the pressure on him to start the play in possession and both defensively and offensively be the driving force for Ghana and he'll be looking to really assert himself in that midfield area well, already Jordan Ayu just got clattered into on the halfway line so a free kick's been given and Gideon Mensah who's one of those three players coming into the side today works it infield for Ghana but the ball ends up with Kim sung Yu, the goalkeeper out to the left side in central defender Kim Yung Guan and he plays a diamond ball looking for Cho on halfway. Deflects out to the left hand side. And South Korea coming forward, but Tarek Lapsi back in defence very, very calmly. Just lets the ball run out of play away from Sun Hyung Min. And another Ghanaian goal kick coming up on two minutes on Talk Sport in the World Cup. It's 0 0. Yeah, a feature of uh, South Korea's play is one of the midfield players will tend to go and drop in to almost make a back three it really allows the fullbacks then to get nice and high and they'll be then trying to do that and overload the Ghanaian fullbacks 2v1 and then try and get Son Hyung Min Gwon Chan Hyun into the game so Salisu of Southampton tried to threaten it through for Jordan Ayu but it's cleared away it's just knocked back there by Kwang Yim Byom into the penalty area for Kim Yong Gwon it is clear to go straight out of the flow on the far side at Education City for a throw that Tariq Lamptey will take. Throws it backwards and then it's picked up in midfield looking for Samed. Dropped into the feet of Kudus, who's one of those players walking a yellow card tight rope. There's four Ghanaians who were booked against Portugal, including Kudus, along with Inyaki Williams, Andre Ayu, and Saidu, who's on the bench today. Just the one player 
in the South Korean lineup. That's the man who's coming up front, Cho Gwe Sung. He came on as a substitute against Uruguay, and he was cautioned. Free kick to Ghana, right-hand side. We're in the fourth minute of the first half. Live on Talk Sports of the World Cup. And Kudus and Jordan Ayu are standing over this. It's about five or six yards in from the far touch line. Jordan Ayu leaves it for Kudus. He floats it into the box. Tate tried to get the head of it, but Cho Gwe Sung was back defending. And now South Korea with a chance to attack over the halfway line. Good pace on the right-hand side. They're looking to get them away down the right-hand side of the box. Flick back for a chance for Cho Gwe Sung in the middle. Oh, just couldn't get hold of it. It was good defending in the end. I think by Daniel Amate just sliding in. Lamptey brings it away and scurries in field and lays it off to Andre Ayu sitting quite deep. He plays a neat ball out to the left-hand side looking for his brother. But it goes out of play and South Korea have a throw. Nil-nil on talk sport. Four minutes gone. It was a fantastic third man run from Wang Yi beyond. He just runs beyond the, the striker, gets played in down the right hand side and then tries to flash across and just not sure of the movement. Son Young Min's in there, he's not made any move whatsoever. He's just stood there for a, a possible cutback that was never going to arrive. Movement needs to be a bit better there. Dean Ashton alongside me, Ian Tante, here on TalkSport, live in Doha. This stadium in the, the west of the city, and as many of the grounds at World Cup 2022, it holds around 40,000 spectators. Partey of Arsenal gets up to the halfway line for Ghana, clips it down the left-hand side. It's overhit either for Williams or Andre Ayu. It'll be a throw for Kim Moon Hwan, the Korean right-back. Paolo Bento, the coach of South Korea. Of course, he plays against his home country next. And he played in that game against South Korea in the 2002 World Cup when Gus hitting South Korea did for the Portuguese. Now he's coaching the club, the country that beat him 20 years ago in this tournament. Samed is dispossessed and now a chance for Son Young Min to get away down the left hand side goes to ground under pressure from Lamptey free kick says Anthony Taylor and a chance for South Korea to work the ball into the Ghanaian box as Son thinks that Lamptey should be punished with more than just a free kick oh, he's lucky isn't he Lamptey he just runs into the back of Son puts his arm onto his back and just pushes him over when he was 1v1 against Damati he's very very lucky not to receive a yellow card from Anthony Taylor but that's just the first little glimpse of that that battle between the two you mentioned it before kickoff Dean now two players standing over the free kick Son is one of them Juan Chancun is the other so it could be a right footed delivery from Son or left from Quan but it's Son Jong Min he actually rolls it in field to Van Nguyen back into the area left hand side can they work it across the face of goal no as it goes high in the air and goes out of play and that will be a corner kick will it for Ghana it's 0-0 we played 7 minutes brilliant free kick I mean it's so difficult when you have a central free kick you know near the halfway line do you try and play it into the box actually they played it sideways and then got a, a disguised runner on the opposite side just clipped it over the top just didn't get onto it quick enough Son's got the ball spotted down on the far side for a corner kick. And Kim jin Soo's just been spoken to by Anthony Taylor. It's taken short, whipped in by to the near post. Comes out to the edge of the box and it's driven wide by a deflection. It was Yong Woo Yong who got the effort away and it was deflected. So it's another corner to South Korea, but this time on their right-hand side, nil-nil. He's so quick to get out, isn't he, Lamptey? Diving at the feet of Yong Woo Yong. Who, decent strike but well, that's just brilliant defending to get out that quickly there's no slouch Tariq Lamptey but it is a right wing corner now for South Korea and once again Kron has joined Son at the near side corner quadrant but he's sent away Son plays it in right foot in near post headed across the face of goal and it's toe poked away in the nick of time comes out to the edge of the area might drop inside the box for a red shirt but South Korea have lost it and then they win it back almost immediately as it's a bit lax 
by Tarek Lamptey in the end. Ball goes back into the box, stumped away by Garner, but South Korea win it back, looking for an option down the right-hand side of the box. It looks like they've won another corner, they have indeed. Good pressure down that right-hand side from Yong Woo Yong, and another corner goes South Korea's way. Nil-nil. Well, every single set play so far for South Korea has been a clever one. This time it was flashed into that near post area where Kim Min Jai was there just to try and flick it towards the back post. It was blocked and then there was an almighty scramble before they then put it wide again. Well, Kim Min Jai and Kim Young Gwon, the centre halves up from the back. Balls rolled out to the right hand corner of the area, ball into the near post, headed away by Andre Ayu. Goes all the way back to halfway, but there was nobody in a white Garner shirt to pressurise the Korean defence, so it's Wang in Byung. It's a lovely raking ball out to the left-hand side, headed in field by Yong Woo Yong. Cho will bring it out to the left-hand side of the area, rolls it back into central midfield. Now it's the left-back Kim Jin Soo. Has to work it back in field, it's drilled into the box and overhit. The intention was to hit it to the right-hand side and try and pick out Kim Woo Hwan, the right-back that's stolen forward. But overhit by Young Woo Young and it's a goal kick to Garner. It's nil-nil on talk sport. Ian Danter and Dean Ashton will be replayed. Pretty much 10 minutes in Education City. They've made a great start, South Korea. The energy's been great. The cleverness of the, the set plays has caused Garner some problems. And even then, Kim Woo Hwan, the right-back it was, looking to get in at the back post as it was played diagonally across that was overhit. So they will really get those full-backs nice and high when they're in good possession. Falls back with the keeper, Kim Seung-gyu. He plays for the Al Shabab side in Saudi Arabia, near here. It's rolled back to him once again by the giant defender, Kim Min Jai, who, as you mentioned, three matches has been a real hit at Napoli since coming into the Italian side. All the adored by those at the Diego Maradona Stadium. Out to this near side, and Kim Moon Hwan. Early ball down the right-hand side. Come to be dealt with by Mensa for Ghana. He's played back in field. And South Korea will win it back on halfway. And they're dominating the early proceedings here. Are oh, the South Koreans. Kim Jin Soo making a run down the left-hand side. Lamptey trying to hold him up. Ball rolled down the left-hand side of the area for Yong Woo Yong. Could he win a corner? He has. Yet another. A fourth corner inside a quarter hour for South Korea. Still nil-nil though. Yeah. Thomas Partey there, just having a word with Lamptey. Didn't get out quick enough to Kim Jin Soo. Allowed that ball then to be played down the side of him. And Partey had to come across from that midfield area just to bail Amati out. So, Son Hyung Min with a right-footed in-swinging corner. Bon Shang Hoon is there again. In case he wants to use it, but it's swung into the near post and well headed out by Salah Soo on this occasion. South Korea trying to keep it in play on the left-hand side. Now it's Kwon. Get to the left-hand corner of the area. Teased out to the left-hand side. Son's there again. Looking to take on Lamptey. Drives to the byline. Wins yet another corner for South Korea. They are asking all sorts of questions of the Africans in these early stages. Nil-nil. Really having to work hard. Ghana at the moment. Both Partey and Sam Ed really deep and tight to the back four Lamptey's been worked incredibly hard on that side and lovely little right footed step over from Son driving down to the byline and again that extra bit of pace from Lamptey was just enough so corner number five for South Korea once again it's Son Jung Min directing operations into the near post four actually from Son this time and come to be cleared just hoofed away by Tarek Lamptey anywhere will do just to get it down the field but it just drifts all the way back to the goalkeeper and Kim Young Gwon will now collect it and Kim Min Jai will start the next move out to the left hand side from Young Woo Young chance for Son to move in field just to play it back into the centre circle clips out to this near side South Korea have numbers on this right-hand side. It's kept in play by Kwong Chan Hoon. But they're just tidying things up at the back and Kim Min Jai Natalie has it once again. 
He said he had his first ever muscle injury after the game against Uruguay, which he'd never experienced before. But he's all right, he's out there. Had a strong step in South Korea if you've never had a muscle injury before <laughs> at the age of 26. Free kick to Ghana. What are Ghana doing wrong here, Dean Ashton? Because they, they can barely get a kick of the ball. They're just, they're, they're, every second ball that's dropping down, they're second to it. At the moment, South Korea's energy and the way they've flooded forwards, they're just not allowing Ghana the time to get on the ball and win those second balls. And sometimes that's what it's about. They're just hanging in there at the moment. Ghana are the lowest ranked side at this tournament. Their FIFA ranking is 61. But they do have World Cup pedigree. Don't forget they've got a game against Uruguay coming up that will bring back memories of that game in 2010 and that handball from Luis Suarez still in the Uruguay squad. That'll be fun. Particularly if Ghana have got something to play for on match day three. You're listening to Talk Sport. More games to come today. Adrian Durham, Joe Shannon and Tony Castrino will bring you Brazil against Switzerland. That was a 1-1 draw in the World Cup group stages four years ago in Russia when those two met. And Portugal-Uruguay at 7 o'clock in this group. Hugh Rosencroft, Alex Rook and Leanne Sanderson bring you that one. They'll also bring you, at that time, the news of the FA Cup third round draw. Yeah, there's a third round draw going on whilst the World Cup match is in progress. Keep it with Talk Sport and you'll find out who your team is playing in the third round, if your team is in the hat. South Korea in possession, right hand side, it's with Kim Moon Hwan, who, as Dean Ashton has been saying, is a right back given license to get forward. Back it goes though to Wang Im Byung, one of the defensive midfielders, into the feet of Cho. Couldn't quite hold it up, but he's helped out by Kwon on this near side. Now, Garner have got a chance to stretch their legs and try and release Inyaki Williams down the left-hand side, but he was never going to beat Kim Min Jai. And he rolls it back to Kim Shung the goalkeeper, and it ends up out of play. And it will be a throw to South Korea, just shy of the halfway line. We played a quarter of an hour on Talk Sport. It's nil-nil between South Korea and Ghana. Dean Ashton. And what can tend to happen is when you are under such severe pressure as Ghana are, when you do then win the ball back you then tend to panic just want to get it away and want to start an attack and that was the case there that ball in towards Inaki Williams was just far too overhit and straight away they lose possession and they're back defending again Ghana have only failed to score in one of their last nine World Cup matches but equally just one clean sheet for Ghana in their last 11 such games and they've got some defending to do here as Son Jung Min teases it out to the right hand side. Chance for the cross from Kwon to the far post. Brought down well by Kim Jin Soon. He's won another corner. Half a dozen corners inside the first quarter of the game for South Korea. They need to make one of these count, Dean Ashton. They do. And again, it's the fullback. Kim Jin Soo on that left hand side. He's the one getting in the box. So Whenever it's on the opposite side, the other fullback makes sure he's trying to get in the box. I really like that when you've got good possession and clearly you know that one of your midfield players could drop in to help the two centre backs. You can get forward and get yourself in the box and add that extra body in there when the cross is coming in. So once again, Sun Jung Min spots the ball down, but Anthony Taylor spotted a bit of pushing and shoving. Looking particularly at Lawrence Atizigi, the Ghana goalkeeper there. Now he bids Son Young Min that it's okay to send the corner in. Raises his left arm, Son. Drives it into the near post. An attempted flick on at the near post and a claim for the handball by Cho against the Ghanaian defender. Nothing doing, says Anthony Taylor, but it is another corner. Well, that's three now that they've whipped to that near post. That's clearly something they're looking at is for it to be flicked on as it hits Salisu in the chest not the arm but they're obviously looking for that flick and then making sure you've got three or four runners all running in towards the six yard box to tap it in still got another man out there with son who's been taking all the corners Kwon's out there but once again son delivers a little deeper this time headed away by Mensah at the near post for ghana but it's back out to son jung min level with the edge of the area kim min jai's up there might win it back again, there's two down the left-hand side of the box for South Korea. But the ball 
whipped out to the right hand side clipped into the box by Kwon might drop to Kim Jin Soo left hand side but again just a, a hoofed clearance by Ghana no style or substance to it whatsoever just getting it down the field trying to relieve that pressure on the Africans nil nil it stays with 19 minutes gone nearly on TalkSport they've got better players than that though to be able to put it into feet under pressure surely because at the moment all you're doing is just giving possession back to South Korea who have been so good in the start of this half it was Kim Min Jai who played that cross field pass it actually bounced off Anthony Taylor's head before it was then crossed in and Song Hyun Min tried the acro acrobatic overhead kick which I think says a lot about how comfortable he must feel with that mask on Kim Min Jai allowed to come forward good strides out to the left hand side Kim Jin Soo the left back is forward drives it into the area went through the legs of Lamptey but again Ghana just put their foot through it get it downfield but it won't stick with Andre Ayu up front and South Korea are firmly in control of this match with nearly 20 minutes played but they've yet to force the Ghanaian keeper Lawrence Atiziggy into any sort of safe despite all the territory and the seven corners that they've won it's goalless here I feel sorry for Tarek Lamptey at the moment he's getting absolutely no support there was only once where Partey came across but Andre Ayu Kudush neither of those players are, are tracking back and helping him out as Kim Jin Su is just raiding down that side and doubling up with Son Hyung Min against Lamptey he needs a bit of help and for the first time in a while Ghana have got some players inside the South Korean half and it's Tarek Lamptey making strides down the far side tried to flick it in field for Kudush but there's red shirts all around and South Korea win it back but then they lose out Andre Ayu now driving toward the area for Ghana plenty to his left not much to his right but there's a Korean player down is it Son Jung Min who's down face down in the turf I think it's Cho actually and there's a yellow card for Daniel Amate for something that's happened off the ball there and the Leicester defender is cautioned by Anthony Taylor nil nil well yeah you're right it must be off the ball because the ball had gone Andre Ayu was on the way and Daniel Amate just takes a little bit of a swing it's not a proper swing of the elbow he just puts his arm out into the face of Cho I don't really know why he's bothering doing that to be honest Daniel Amate that there was no it's not as if Cho did anything either just to sort of wind him up well just spotted though wasn't it was by Anthony Taylor maybe uh, assisted by his two English assistants on the line now Kim Jin Soo is just moving slightly awkwardly the left back having made that challenge to deny Lamptey getting the ball in field just a clash of legs on that far touch line but eventually play will get back underway he's rolled his left sock down for a minute Kim Jin Soo but after that Amate yellow card the free kick is for South Korea it's 0-0 on TalkSport we're approaching the midway point of the first half tomorrow group A fixtures finish we get to the final group stage game so kickoffs at 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 Netherlands Qatar on TalkSport at 3 on TalkSport 2 at the same time what a game Ecuador Senegal plenty to play for for both of those and then England later against Wales here comes Jordan Ayew for Ghana at 0-0 Inaki Williams left hand side level the edge of the area ball into the box looking for Ayew well defended by Kim Young won and the ball downfield asking Cho to give chase but Atiziggy slightly awkward clearance as the ball bounced in front of him at the edge of the area but he got distance on the clearance the Ghanaian keeper and it's tucked in field for Thomas Partey good ball for Andre Ayew in the centre circle now he allows Lamptey to scurry away down the right hand side for the Black Stars whips the ball into the box looking for Williams headed away again this time by Kim Young Guan and now Ghana are getting the second balls as Korea start a hurried clearance ball might break here for Samit turning back infield neat ball for Thomas Partey the Arsenal man finds the Crystal Palace player Jordan Ayew wriggling away down this left hand touch line he's won a throw uh, a free kick rather Wang Inbyon with a challenge from behind that didn't win the ball free kick on this near touch line to Ghana 
who are trying to get a foothold in this game at 0-0. Well, finally, the Ayo brothers have got themselves into the game. Andre and Jordan on this left-hand side does brilliantly here to win the free kick as he steps across and then just throws his right leg across the defender waiting for the challenge and gets clattered into his calf. So it's just in from the left-hand touchline, midway point of the South Korean half, and South Korea are defending, it seems to be, very deep from this kick. Normally you'd see teams defending at least the penalty spot, but they're nearer to the six-yard line rather than the penalty spot. They're going to drop deeper. Could his dummies to take it. Swung in by Jordan Ayew. Heads go up. He drops six yards out, and he's tucked in for 1-0. And it's... Mo Salisu of Southampton, what a time to score your first international goal to put your side in front at a World Cup after all the pressure that South Korea have had in this opening quarter. A ball into the box causes chaos and from close range Mo Salisu turns it home. It is South Korea nil, Ghana one. Well you made the point, clearly they don't have much confidence with the goalkeeper, Kim sung Yui. The ball comes in and it lands on the six-yard line. That's where your keeper should be coming out, punching, taking absolutely everything. It then just ricochets down perfectly for Salisu, who can do nothing but put it in the net from three yards out. A ridiculously deep defensive line from that free kick and they paid the price with Salisu tapping in. So Southampton's Mo Salisu didn't feature in the qualifiers at all for Ghana. Gets Ghana in front 25 minutes in. Anthony Taylor is just waiting for the VAR truck to check that all is well. The ball did seem to strike Andre Ayew's arm as it landed in the box but Andre Ayew knew nothing about it. The ball was, the, his arm was down by his side. The AR check is ongoing just to make sure that it wasn't a deliberate handball by Andre Ayew and Anthony Taylor is just explaining to the players can't do anything until I get the word from the VAR truck. And still we wait. The message has gone up on the Jumbotron screens around Education City. I mean, it's Alice who waits on his haunches. It definitely hits his arm, but it comes off a, you know, a South Korean head first from about half a yard. Yeah, it's been given, it's been confirmed. I think that's the right decision. And Ghana lead on Talk Sport. Now South Korea have got to come out and score their first goal of the tournament. A nil-nil with Uruguay was a very, very creditable result. But now they're under pressure against the lowest ranked side in the tournament. And they've been carrying all the threat. And then Kudus is fouled as Ghana try and come forward. Fouled by Kim Min Jai. Back to uh, Young Woo Young who brought down Kudus and he gets a yellow card from Anthony Taylor. And Ghana now have a free kick midway point of the South Korean half. And the pressure really is on for South Korea. And Paolo Bento must be wondering what's hit him it's on amazing. the bench. It's amazing, isn't it? They've been <laughs> totally under pressure in this game. Ghana, they get the goal and all of a sudden it just gives the players such a huge lift and then Kudush does well to get away from Young Woo Young who gives away the free kick, same as Lamptey's earlier who didn't get it. Kudush ball into the box, headed across the face of goal ball. last ditch defending from South Korea to get it away to halfway, collected by Lamptey, rolls it back to Atizigi's keeper, had to come right outside of his penalty area, clipped it downfield and it bounced once and through to Kim sung Yu. And now South Korea have to collect their thoughts as we drift towards the half-hour mark in the World Cup on Talks Wall. Long, down, long ball downfield, looking for Son. But it's over hit and claimed by Lawrence Atiziggy. 
making his 13th appearance in goal for Ghana. Picked up by the goal scorer, Salisu. And Salis Abdul Samed picks it up off the back four. Salisu again, long ball downfield, trying to find Jordan Ayu. Runs into trouble, ball cleared up to halfway. Claims of a foul against Kwon Chang Hoon. In fact, it's Cho who's been brought down, feeling the small of his back as he was caught right on halfway by Salisu. Free kick to South Korea. 1 0 Ghana lead on Talk Sport. Yeah, they hurt those ones when the defender knows he's going to win it over the top of you and just decides to jam his knee into your lower back. So Ghana score with their first attempt of the match. Almost the first time they had numbers inside the South Korean penalty area. But we mentioned before the free kick was taken that South Korea looked like they were awfully deep. Not giving their keeper the easiest of decisions as to whether to stay or whether to come out. Well, I mean, I mean, you picked up on it straight away as soon as they put the free kick down, how deep they were. And usually that is because you don't have the confidence in the goalkeeper or the goalkeeper doesn't have that confidence and wants the defenders to deal with it because usually the goalkeeper would want as much of the penalty area as he possibly can have so he can come out claim punch and there just wasn't that he actually retreated onto the goal line rather than even coming out when it was when the ball landed pretty much on the six yard line that's the voice of former England striker Dean Ashton alongside me Ian Danta on talk sport Natalie Sawyer is with us as well. Live from Doha, South Korea nil, Ghana one. Kim Jin Soo can't get the better of Amate down the right hand side. He rolls it in field to Andre Ayu, lets the ball run across his body and keeps it away from Son Jung Min. As we hit the half hour mark at Education City, Salisu, whose goal separates the sides, finds Partey. Samed rolls it back to Amate. Salisu once again. Cho comes to close him down. It's clipped in field. And Garner just content to pass it around in little squares inside their own half at the moment. Just to almost to get a feel of the ball that they barely had in this opening half an hour. Well, they're just there's a bit of calmness now, isn't there? Within the side. After that goal. And you're right, starting to get Partey and Samed on the ball in midfield get them turned look to try and play forwards if not they'll just combine Samed is dropping in between the two centre backs as well to try and facilitate that possession play Marte just hits a raking ball downfield looking for Inaki Williams who holds it up at the edge of the area twists and turns gets down the right hand side of the box and then he pushed Kim Jin Su as he tried to get round him and Anthony Taylor says that's a foul and that's a free kick to South Korea Ghana still lead by a goal to nil. Half an hour gone on talks for. Well, if Kim Ji Su is going to be trying to get down that left hand side, then that's where the space is. Just to play that over the top. Really clever movement from Inaki Williams just to run into that space. Took it brilliantly with the outside of his right foot and then twisted and turned. Just took too long. You want to like, out of your feet and striking straight away. And instead, the fullback was able to get back at him and dispossess him. South Korea in possession on the halfway line. It's played back to Kim Min Jai. Now Kim Moon Hwan. Early ball down the right hand side of the box. They try to keep it in play, but it's just overrun by Kwon Chang Hoon and goes out of play for a goal kick to Ghana. And now South Korea have to reappraise how they go about their business. But for Ato Odo, the Ghana coach just 47 years young his first major coaching role the funny thing is he used to work as Hamburg's under 19 coach Ghana's main man and he used to coach there Sun Jung Min when he was coming through in German football up against him today on the biggest possible stage and it's Ghana who have the edge here maybe that's why Lamptey's playing maybe he feels like he just needs to put that real pace up against Son Hung Min Andre Ayu plays the ball infield up to his 
younger brother, Mensa. One of the players brought in by Otto today in place of Baba Raman. Now Amate of Leicester leaves it for Thomas Party. Samid takes over in the centre circle and, and as Dean Ashton was saying it's now much calmer from Ghana in possession and South Korea almost sitting back a little bit here's Inyaki Williams through the legs of Kim Moon Hwan Mensa on this near touchline rolls it in field to Samid this little clip over to the chest of Daniel Amate can bring it down 20 yards inside the South Korean half a little neat back heel for Thomas Partey Looking for an option, he's got players right and left, he goes just back onto square to Samed. Now Gideon Mensah, the left back, moves up on the left-hand side. Leaves it for Jordan Ayew, right foot is swinging cross, Williams! And Kudus is there! It's 2-0 to Ghana, and the young Ajax star got his head on it right at the far post. South Korea undone by a ball into the box, but this time from open play... And Mohamed Kudus has put Ghana in dreamland. Having narrowly lost their first game, they're now two goals up on the team that dominated them for the first quarter. Lovely ball in from Jordan Ayew. Above Williams, above Ayew, but Kudus didn't miss at the far post and just guided the header in for South Korea nil, Ghana too. When you're talking about a perfect delivery, this is it from Jordan Ayew he really does put the pace and dip onto it and you always say to a wide player aim for that far post as if it's almost going to go in itself and then you've just got to make that clever run which is exactly what Mohamed Kudush does he's offside to start with he just jinks back onside and then makes that secondary run he just glances the header in which pretty much is going in anyway because the pace is on the cross and he can't miss Garner have just completely turned what looked like a, a difficult game right into their favour sixth international goal for the young Ajax lad who scored 10 goals already for his club this season a real breakthrough year for Mohamed Kudus been scoring goals in the Eredivisie and the Champions League and now he scored at a World Cup and Ghana have a scoreline that you would have scarcely believed a quarter of an hour ago 2-0 they lead and the South Korean fans in the stands looking decidedly glum and now they've got more defending to do as Kudus who just scored that second brings the ball away downfield are you calling for it in the middle that's Andre are you but Jordan are you picks it up Mensa making a strong run down the left hand side Jordan are you flicks it out to him back it goes to the Crystal Palace forward and he sends it back to halfway and Salisu Amate just to his right nine minutes to half time Lamptey keeps it in play on the right hand side early cross into Williams at the near post juggles with the ball loses it but only half cleared by South Korea now they've got every man in the red South Korean shirt behind the ball from the midway point of their own half it's almost like the oh great the turn from brilliant. Samed rolls the ball up to the edge of the area little turn away from Kudus, oh lovely skill from him as well up to the edge of the area Lamptey now picks it up right hand side whips the ball into the box headed out by Kim Min Jai it's desperate defending now from South Korea ball goes up to halfway, but it's defended out of play by Salisu this football match has completely turned on its head well you just wonder whether South Korea almost have, like a boxer's punched themselves out Ghana were just covering up in the early part of this game and all of a sudden I'm looking around at the South Korean players some of them are walking almost sat the energy out of them the goals as well will do that especially the confidence two goals in the first half for Ghana their previous six goals had all come in the second half of World Cup matches Suleiman Tari was the last to score in the first half his son Young Min at the other end trying to do something about it inside the D but five or six Ghana players around him pulls it back to the edge of the air and the ball's fired over the top by Kwon Chang Hoon but the offside flag had gone up against Sun Jung Min earlier in the move so it won't be a corner kick to South Korea instead it'll be a free kick to Ghana who lead 2-0 with seven minutes to half time on Talk Sport Dean Ashton well he tried to keep himself onside 
Son Young Min. But the ball was just too slow in getting to him. And he was definitely offside when eventually he then pulled it back to Guan, who just fired. Yep. Son was goal. offside. Son definitely offside. Son, of course, plays for Tottenham. And the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is the setting for our live and exclusive boxing commentary on Saturday night. Tyson Fury against Derek Tejura, the trilogy, live and exclusive radio commentary on Talk Sport from 9 p.m. with Adam Catchell, Gareth A. Davis, Andy Clark, Spencer Oliver, all the team at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which of course is been lying dormant for the last couple of weeks since this tournament got underway. But don't forget, once you've had your Christmas dinner, every Premier League game from the Boxing Day programme that actually goes across three days the 26th 27th 28th all those games live and exclusive on talk sport and talk sport 2 2-0 to Ghana the ball is with Kim Min Jai who's trying to join him with the strikers loses out though on this near side to Jordan Ayew and he is then dispossessed by Kim Moon Hwan a bit more urgency about South Korea as they try and come forward Kwon down the right hand side held up by Gideon Mensah works the ball in field there was some neat interplay for a moment then from South Korea but Ghana finds a way to get it clear but it's just lobbed out from Kim Yong Gwon out to the left hand side and a chance for Yong Woo Yong into the edge of the area Son playing a bit more centrally now it seems out to the left hand side of the area and Yong again Kim Jin Su the left back ball into the box headed out by Salisu there were plenty in red there waiting for that cross and it's not fully cleared Young Woo Young out to Kim Jin Su once again level with the edge of the Ghanaian penalty area five to half time Ghana 2-0 up from nowhere on talk sport now it's Kim Bin Jai with a diagonal ball another one he's hit two of those now out to Kim Jin Su left hand side isolating Lamptey checks onto his right foot thought about a cross Rolls it back in field instead. And South Korea looking to find that avenue, looking to find that killer pass to thread through, but now they've gone back into their own half. And Kim Yong Gwon, Kim Min Jai now, looks for the right back. Kim Moon Hwan, in field it goes, ball turned round the corner, asking for the run from Kwon Shang Hoon, but it's over hit, much to the delight of the putters behind that goal to the right hand side it's 2-0 to the Africans the lowest ranked team in the tournament and there's very little time left in this first half for South Korea to do anything about it well, it's almost like they came out they scored two goals and they've gone back in again into their shell defensive shell um, Ghana and you've got to say in that period they did defend very well now on a loose possession in the centre circle there's a Korean player down and it's uh, Young Woo Young who's holding his jaw just sitting up I'm not sure he's going to need any treatment but he was just caught inadvertently by Andre Ayew in fact by his own player he's actually caught by Huang and Biom as they both tried to get the ball off Andre Ayew just momentarily stunned but he's back on his feet Young Woo Young so a little uncontested drop ball gives South Korea possession back. But time is running out in this first half. Three minutes of normal time to go, plus whatever Anthony Taylor wants to add on for stoppages. South Korea come forward. Ball's headed across the edge of the area, but Salisu gets it clear. Further clear by Andre Ayu. Knocked down by Williams for Kudus who juggles with the ball for a moment as he gets up to halfway. Lamptey takes over on the far side. Kudus takes the game down to walking pace. Infield to Andre Ayew, who I thought was sensational in his last year at Swansea City. Gets it back again, Andre Ayew. Back to goal, 25 yards out. Trying to wriggle clear of four red shirts around him. And it's played out to Sun Jung Min, who's trying to launch a counter-attack. Down the left-hand side for South Korea. Amate goes with him. Tries to jink inside him. Can't do so. Kudus can't prevent the throw, though, for South Korea. Near the corner flag on the South Korean left. 2-0 Ghana. Well, he wasn't doing that early on, Kudush. He wasn't coming back and tracking the run. He did that time. 
It's exactly what you want from your teammate, Amate. Just giving him a, a pat on the back for that. As Son Young Min was trying to drive away in 1v1 against Amati. Throw to Kim Jin Su, the left back. About 10 yards from the corner flag, left hand side. Looking for support. Rolls it back and it's going to be tucked back to Kim Min Jai at the edge of the centre circle. Options left and right as he moves forward 5 or 10 yards. Out to this near side in Kwon. Kim Moon Hwan is there too. Goes back to Kim Min Jai. They're going to try and be patient here and work the ball from right to left and look for an opening. Kim Jin Su, the left back now, has it. Midway point of the Ghana half. Plays it back to Young Woo Young. He will just drift away. Plays it down the left hand side. And now it's a chance for Young Woo Young. He loses out to Lamptey, who had a difficult first. 20-25 minutes has grown into the game but now he's been dispossessed and Lamptey has to get back in position edging towards half time on TalkSport Ghana in a very unusual position I'll tell you about that in a moment because it's rare that they go 2-0 up in World Cup games it's only the second time they've been 2-0 up in their history after their win against the Czech Republic in Germany cross comes into their box but they defend it well enough headed down for Andre Ayew Slightly lazy clearance though from IU and South Korea win it back. Well, they've put themselves in many good crossing positions, haven't they, South Korea? But they've dealt with it well. Salasu and Amati. Son has worked out to Kim Moon Hwan. Deep ball to the far post. And it kept in play by Kim Jin Soo down by the corner flag on the left hand side. Rolls it in field. Chance for a cross from the left-hand corner of the air. In fact, it's a shot that's ripped with the right foot and goes over the bar from Young Woo Young. And Lawrence Atiziggy watched it all the way and decided it wasn't worth diving for. And he's right because it ended up from the replays we're just seeing going a good three or four yards wide. Goal kick to Ghana. And we're about to find out how much added time we'll have at Education City. The answer to that question is five minutes of additional time with Ghana 2-0 up. Yeah, and that just, I think, shows where South Korea are at with that opportunity. Uh, Young Woo Young striking five or six yards wide and that dreaded stat again for South Korea. Zero shots on target in this half. That's, that's the big problem. Indeed, they limited Uruguay to just one, but they weren't prolific at all in that first game they've got to find a solution as I mentioned seven corners that they've had during this first half none of which they've made count or even forced Lawrence Atiziggy into a save Garnet with Williams trying to get away down the left hand side but Kim Min Jai slides in gets it out of play for a throw in Remember England Wales tomorrow night at seven on Talksport as Group B finishes, and at the same time the little matter of Iran against the USA on Talksport two also at seven o'clock. No love lost there. And certainly the former American coach Jurgen Klinsmann has not helped matters with some of his comments about Iranian football. Meanwhile. Ghana have the ball down the other end of the pitch. I think they've won their first corner. Jordan, are you just spotting it down? And after seven corners to the South Koreans, what are going to Ghana? What are Ghana? Ghana do with their first one? Right-footed in swing to come from the Crystal Palace forward. Jordan, are you? Packed six-yard box, whips into the near post, poor corner actually, comfortably headed clear. But it comes back to the halfway line. Lamptey's the furthest man back. And he'll give it back to Ati Ziggy. Left-footed ball driven downfield by the Ghana keeper. Headed up to halfway. South Korea trying to make headway, but good defending by Thomas Partey. Just got his body in the way in between player and ball. And let it drift out on the far side for a Ghanaian throw. Paolo Bento's probably thinking, well... I mean, what do I do now? I've now given pretty much all of my forwards an opportunity to create, to test the goalkeeper in the two games so far, and it's not worked. 
even Son has not had an opportunity, you would say, in this in this half. He did say that he felt Son felt a little restricted by wearing that mask. Well, I, I, for the first yeah, time. I've been there. I've, I've worn one of those. It's not particularly nice. Your peripheral vision is slightly impaired with wearing it. I mean, he tried an overhead kick, so I don't think he's worried about the injury itself. It's just, it's not ideal having to wear one of those. Into the third minute of five minimum that have been added on. Kim Moon Hwan. Moves in field for South Korea, goes down just outside the box, but no foul. And the ball just rolls through harmlessly from the Ghana point of view to Lawrence Atiziggy, who plays his club football in Switzerland for St. Gallen. He has plenty of time to size up his options before clearing from hands at Education City. South Korea nil, Ghana two, on talk sport at the World Cup. Now Williams has just turned his defender nicely into the area and has won a corner as well so simple ball just clipped downfield by the keeper Williams rolled Kim Min Jai and forced the giant defender to put it out for a corner kick yeah on the odd occasion that he's found that gap to run into in behind the fullbacks in Aki Williams he's had the pace to, to trouble South Korea Kim Min Jai just saying to Anthony Taylor was he not offside I don't think he was I thought he bent his run brilliantly into the channel Jordan Ayew then with this latest corner for Ghana again into a right under the crossbar and the keeper did really well actually Kim sung Yu, as Thomas Partey was flying in put him off and Partey ended up putting it over came off his shoulder in the end right at the near post chance goes begging for Ghana right at the end of the half yeah didn't look comfortable at all Kim sung Yu in the South Korean goal he whipped it right underneath the crossbar and that for me was definitely a, another corner I thought Partey headed it against the hands of the goalkeeper and the referee brings the first half to a close and for only the second time in their World Cup history Ghana have a 2-0 lead in a World Cup match but you wouldn't have expected that to be the scoreline with 20 minutes gone with South Korea forcing seven corners and piling the pressure on but then suddenly the ball whipped in from a free kick into the box panic inside the six yard area and Mo Salasu of Southampton turned it into the net from close range that was on 24 minutes and then 10 after that after the half hour Kudus with a header lovely ball into the box from Jordan Ayew and Kudus just helped it on its way with a little glancing header at the far post. Massive work to do for Paolo Bento and South Korea in the second half. Otherwise their World Cup is in serious jeopardy. At the break at Education City, live on TalkSport, South Korea nil, Ghana two. Thank you Natalie and straight away South Korea are making a change. Paolo Bento has taken off Yong Ru Yong. Uh, brought on Na Sang Ho, number 17, who plays for FC Seoul in Korea. He was part of that front four in the 0-0 draw against Uruguay. So that doesn't change a great deal, I don't think, Dean Ashton, in terms of how South Korea set up of this second half. No, I think it just depends exactly where Na is going to is going to play. Is he going to play as a 10? Is he going to play on the right? Or is Song going to play as a 10 and he go on the left? We'll just see once they do set themselves up, just in a huddle at the moment. It's their first competitive meeting this afternoon, South Korea and Ghana. They'd met in six friendlies prior to that, three wins each, and they hadn't met since a pre-World Cup match in Miami before everybody went to Brazil in 2014. The IU brothers, Son and Kim Jong-un played in that last meeting in Miami. And it's Andre Ayew who's about to get this second half underway for Ghana. They lead 2-0. And South Korea have made that change. So their revised lineup: Kim Shun Gyu, the goalkeeper, Kim Moon Hwan, Kim Min Jai, Kim Yong Gwan, and Kim Jin Su across the back. Wang Yin Byom and Yong Ru Young in defensive midfielder. And it's now Kwon Chang Hoon, Na Sang Ho, and Son Jung Min in behind Cho Gwe Sung in attack for Ghana. Ati Ziggy, the goalkeeper, Lamti, Amati, Salisu, and Mensah at the back. 
Cho goes down early in the start of the second half, but he's fouled his man, free kick. In front of that, back four for Ghana, Samed and Party, Ayu, that's Jordan Ayu, Andre Ayu and Kudus in behind Williams up front. Ghana in all white this afternoon. South Korea in all bright red with the black trim. And they have an awful lot of work to do in this second half, but they've made that change. Let's see what sort of an effect it will be that Na Sang Ho is on. Scored 13 minutes into his competitive debut a couple of years back. Arabento could do with a repeat of that. Next goal in this game, crucial D National. It is, of course, it can change the mindset. And Ghana will be thinking the same. They'll be thinking, let's try and get the third, and this game would be pretty much over. I think just to confirm, Na Sang Ho has gone over to the right hand side, and Guan Chan Hyun is now playing as the 10. And Son stays on this left hand side. So it's still a 4 2 3 1 for the Koreans, and it's out on the right hand side with Kim Moon Hwan, the right back. There's a little one-two with Quang in beyond, but has to work it back into his own half for Kim Min Jai, who's approaching a half century of caps for his country. Now Kim Young Gwon, even more experienced, on the verge of a century of caps. Sends it out to the left-hand side for Kim Jin Su, midway point of the Ghana half. Really strong work from Kudus to win it back, helped out by Samed, and then Kudus goes down, but no foul, says Anthony Taylor, the referee. The ball is with Wang Inbyon. Plays it out to Kim Bun Hwang, right-hand side, far touch line, with South Korea attacking from right to left towards their most vociferous band of support behind that goal to the left. Back it goes out to the right back, Kim Bun Hwang. Infield it goes to Kwon Shang Hoon. Being a bit patient at the start of this second half, and it's actually now Ghana who are sitting back a little bit. But unbelievably deep. Every single player well within their own half, almost beyond the centre circle. Just sat really deep, denying any space whatsoever between defensive midfield, and then no real space in behind to put that ball over the top. So they're going to have to be patient, or they're going to have to try and get down the sides of this Ghana in defence. Which they're trying to do now with Na Sang Ho, just arrived as a substitute. Deep ball for the far post, goes over the head of Kim Jin Su, who pushed in field from left back. And now Kudu's trying to stride forward. Cho has tried to go with him, and Kudu's got up to the halfway line, did really well for Ghana, and won his team a throw. 2-0 Ghana lead. He's starting to be more and more influential, isn't he, Mohamed Kudush? And this Ghana and team, he works incredibly hard as well. He's industrious, he's physical, but also that left foot of his as well. It's like it's stuck to his boot. Partey of Arsenal in the centre of his own half. Chips it neatly out to Tarek Lamptey on this near side of the right. Plenty of green grass for him to run into it. He's never going to miss that opportunity, Tarek Lamptey. Up to the right-hand corner of the area. It's laid off to Kudus. Approaching the edge of the D, shovels it out left to Gideon Mensah. Mensah early ball into the box, headed out by Kim Jin Su. South Korea desperate defending once again, but it was a good clearance on the header from Kim Jin Su. Back to halfway, Amate into the feet of Kudus. Andre Ayu holds it up well. Great strength from the former Swansea front man. Now it's out on the left hand side with Jordan Ayu. Clipped into the box. Looking for Andre Ayu, his brother, only half cleared by South Korea. Lamptey wriggling to space in the box and trying to left foot in effort, but with his weaker foot just couldn't wrap his left foot round it. And it went harmlessly over for a South Korean goal kick on Talksport. With five minutes gone in the second half, 2 0 still the African side lead. And you can just tell that Son doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to have to come back and defend, but Lamptey is just constant in terms of his relentless running down the right-hand side. And this time he just got away from Son, cut inside, just inside the box, thinking, right, I'm just going to curl this left-footed shot into the far corner and got right underneath it. Horrible effort, curling wayward. 
from Kim Jin Su. He's just receiving a bit of treatment. I think he's taken a bash to the nose and there's a bit of blood. Just went up for a ball that was tossed into the area. Cho got there first, but Kim Jin Su, I think he's had a couple of marshmallows shoved up his nose and a bit in his mouth to try and stem the flow of blood. There must be, I don't know whether you've had those, those things shoved up your nostrils to try and stem the flow of blood. Have you ever had that during a game, Dean Ashman? No. It's been incredibly off-putting. <laughs> Just a bit. Now, goal kick in the end. Kim Jinsu is now off the field for the moment. He's going to be allowed back on in a minute. I don't think there's any need for him to change his number three shirt. As Kim shung the goalkeeper, fires it downfield towards the right-hand side. Brilliantly kept in play on that far side by Jordan Ayew. His brother tries to help him out. But South Korea win possession back. Back it goes to Kim shung 32 years of age. That's the first choice before the 2018 World Cup. Missed out. Then kept 11 clean sheets in South Korea's 14 qualifiers to get to these World Cup finals. Neat touch from Kim Sin Ju's back out. And Son trying to play the ball down the left hand side, but Amate sticks a boot in and it goes out of play for a throw, taken quickly by Son Jung Min. He's got support on this near side from Huang In Byung. Young Woo Young gets it back out to the left hand side. Lovely whips in cross and a header palmed away by Ati Ziggy. Cho got up there at the near post and a dive to his right from Lawrence Atiziggi. That's the first ever on target in this World Cup from the South Koreans. Well, it's still 2 0 Ghana. I have to say, delivery was superb from Kim Jin Su. And Cho does so well because it's right behind him. So he flings himself backwards away from goal, but arcs his neck and heads it then towards the top corner. Atiziggi, really good save, two handed to palm it away. But encouragement for Paolo Bento and South Korea. They trail 2-0. Nearly eight minutes into the second half on Talk Sport at the World Cup. Dean Ashton, Ian Danton, Natalie Sawyer coming to you live from Doha. This stadium, Education City, in the west of the city. Not far from the Qatar National Library where an awful lot of people representation is here. It's a kind of a central hub. South Korea of won a throw on the right-hand side. Cho looking to hold the ball up, but Salisu, who scored Ghana's first goal, gets in front of him and shows great strength. So it's back with Kim Min Jai inside his own half. Gives it back to his goalkeeper, and now one well, of the other Kims in the back five, Kim Young Kwon, finds Kim Jin Soo, plenty of space down the left-hand side. What's the cross like over here, in actual fact? But he will be kept in play on the far side by Na Sang Ho. Now Kim Moon Hwan. Ball goes in field, chance for South Korea to set it up. It's Huang almost got into space at the edge of the D, but now Ghana counter-attack. It's four on two for a moment. Andre Ayu, who's got Parte moving up ahead of him. It goes into the area and put out for a corner kick by a sliding Kim Jin Su. And Ghana suddenly had a four-on-two counter-attack and we're barely ten minutes into the second half here. We've gone a 2 nil up and Andre Ayo has let them off. I can't believe how slow he was in the, the counter-attack. It was there, you're right, four against two. If he plays the ball nice and early, that's when you can overload one side. Instead, he just took forever. It took about six or seven touches. And then when he did eventually play it, of course, it got back. But it is Jordan Ayew's corner from the far side. Whips into the near post and headed onto the roof of the net by Kim Moon So another corner for Ghana. They're catching up South Korea, slow but surely. In their fourth corner. To South Korea, seven. Jordan Ayew again on that far side. Right-footed in swing. Another very busy six-shot box. Four delivery again. From Jordan Ayew, first defender got it clear. Gideon Mensa, the left back, steps in, plays it out to the right hand side, but that's over hit. Lamptey won't catch that. And South Korea have a throw. You're right about Andre Ayew, Dean Ashton. I was mentioning how impressed I was with him 
in his final, final season at Championship Swansea, he almost brought like a, a father figure to some of those young players that were coming through for Steve Cooper at the time, who was sort of the Swansea manager, but yet didn't have his head up at the right moment to see what was around him. That's a surprise because usually he's alert and he's got the quality. I don't know what it was, it just he never really looked up to see that the pass was there to be played nice and early and make use of that overload. Yeah, Thomas Partey was the one that was thundering up alongside him. You surely hear him coming. Out to the left-hand side for South Korea, looking for Kim Jin Su with its overhit. There's another South Korean substitution being readied by Paolo Bento. And that change is going to see Lee, Lee Kang In of Real Mallorca. He's going to come on for Kwong Chan Hoon. So a second change for South Korea. Star of the under 20 World Cup runners up position that South Korea got three years ago. Valencia Youth discovered on a reality show in Spain. Lee Kangin. Like a football idol sort of program. Now flying his trade as I mentioned at Real Mallorca. What can he achieve? He's an attacking midfielder. Lamptey with a throw meantime for Ghana. Down there, right-hand side. One back by South Korea, and it's Kim Moon-Hwan, the right-back. Just tucks it in field for Huang. Tries to twist and turn away from a couple of Ghanaian players. Not quite the halfway line. Kim young won out to Kim Jin Su, left-hand side. Can he get it past Lamptey? Well, he could at first, but Lamptey stuck to his task well. Then he got dispossessed. The first cross in, and a brilliant goal back! It's true! And with only their second ever on target in the entire World Cup, Cho Gae Sung sends the South Korean fans wild with delight. I said the next goal in this game was crucial, and now South Korea have hope. I think it was Lee Kang in just on who whipped a ball in for the left hand side and Cho almost on his knees sliding in at the near post headed it past Ati Ziggy and it's South Korea 1, Gala 2 and what another fantastic delivery in this game from Lee Kang in he did brilliantly to dispossess Lamptey on this left hand side didn't even look up, just whipped in a fantastic cross and there was Cho, he was really alive to the situation, he recognised it a lot quicker than Amati, just got in behind him, stoop low, headed it down underneath the goalkeeper, and they're right back in it. Game on, approaching the hour on talk sport, South Korea, one, Ghana two, 2-0 two at half time to the Africans remember, Quang, down the right hand side of the area, there's Lee again, Trying to make space but couldn't wrap his foot round it and it just goes behind. And suddenly it's got an awful lot louder inside Education City. Those very sombre South Korean fans at half time who look decidedly glum have the belief that they didn't have. Meantime, Kim Min Jai and Jordan Ayu have collided and are both down. You're absolutely right about the whip on that cross from Lee Kangin, Dean Ashton. Just aching to be headed home it was but just if you re if you recognize the flight of the ball early enough as a forward then you're just that step ahead and that's exactly what Cho does he sees that the cross is coming in he picks the flight of it really early I think it was actually Salasu who didn't see that run behind him by the time he'd recognized it was too late Cho was in front of him stooped with the header and got his team right back into it Ball's out of play, suddenly Ghana lose their possession inside their own half. Fifth goal for Cho Gae Sung at this international level for South Korea and his first at a World Cup. Lovely moment for him. Can South Korea build on this? They play Portugal in the final game. Portugal play Uruguay later. That's live on TalkSport in our late kickoff, 7 p.m. Before that, Brazil, Switzerland with Joe Shannon and Tony Cascarino here comes South Korea again Key, Kim with a cross to the far post it's 2-2 and it's Cho again fantastic diving header at the far post 
What a comeback from South Korea. And Cho Gai Sung is the hero of the hour because on the hour, another header, another goal. It's 2 2. Wow. What a response from South Korea in this second half. And again, it's down this left hand side where the delivery is absolutely spot on. You can't ask for much more as a forward. It's a brilliant little run down the side and it's just clipped up towards the back post and Cho Gyu Sung says do you know what I've absolutely got the desire for this he gets up nice and early nice and brave powerful header goalkeeper gets a touch but it's just too powerful what a brave header that is to put his side level brilliant he wanted it more than anybody else inside that penalty area got in between Salisu and Menton neither of whom jumped and Paolo Bento is a man possessed on the touchline the South Korean coach who's getting set to play against the country of his birth in the next game has masterminded a comeback with a couple of substitutions that appear on the face of it Dean Ashton to have made all the difference just two minutes and 48 seconds between those two, those two South Korean goals and I think as well you just I, I just think as a forward when you get those sorts of deliveries they're just perfect to attack you know the first one's got real pace on it so then you just have to glance it in the second one is stood up to the back post for you to just go and attack it nothing the goalkeeper can do on either goal because of the delivery because of how good the delivery was the noise inside education city is being raised and raised by the south korean supporters and now ghana have to respond just a reminder this would put south korea on two points but ghana would only be on one having thought they were ready for their first three-point haul and now they're misplacing passes again but this time further down the field and Cho Gui Sung who plays his club football for Jeon Bung Hyundai in Korea made his debut only last year one of the qualifiers has just scored two at a World Cup how about that? You'd have loved that cross from Kim Jin Soo as well, wouldn't you? Oh, for that second goal. Absolutely. And what's, because he's got up so early, you can almost ride on the back of the defender. As long as you're not using your arms, and that's what he does. He jumps, he uses his chest against the back and head. I think it was a Mensa just to get up above him, flying with that header in. Too much power for the goalkeeper who can only palm it into the roof of the net. Well, what was I saying in the first half? Ghana score a lot in World Cup games but they also concede a lot they failed to score in just one of the last nine but they've kept just one clean sheet now in 12 World Cup games they just needed to keep the door shut but Paolo Bento made a couple of switches and suddenly it seems like the momentum is with the Asian side and the African side there's now heated conversations going out between players like Salisu and Amate trying to piece together why it's gone wrong for Ghana and it's back at 2-2 here well I'm sure they'll be saying you know we've got to work harder to stop the delivery there's two crosses from the left hand side unopposed and it just means then that Cho can make that movement can get a run on them it's Wang who's down incidentally got caught on the back of the head there was a bit of blood actually on the back of his head they've got a towel and a bit of a thousand and one adrenaline solution just trying to stem the flow of blood from the back of his head so he's off the field in south korea temporarily down to 10 men but they still have the ball down at the other end it's with na sang ho one of those substitutes that paolo bento brought on gets it back down the right hand side level with the edge of the ghana penalty area Clips across into the box, chose the target, can't find him this time. And a good clearance by Kudus up over the halfway line. Kim Min Jai is after it, so too is Inaki Williams. And, well, lovely flick over his own head by Kim Min Jai to keep it away from the Ghanaian striker. 2 2 on Talk Sport, and we've still got over a quarter of the game to go. Cho flicks it on for South Korea. 
Swan nearly on it. But it's brought away by Garner. And there's going to be no mistaking Fang in Bjorn when he comes back on because he's got a load of brown tape wrapped around the top of his head. So if I can't spot him from this point on, they always, they always leave just a little tuft of hair, don't they? <laughs> two just, actually, just two sticking out. Yeah, it's not very gallant, is it? Meanwhile, here's Inaki Williams down the left-hand side of the area. Wax it against Kim Min Jai, but the offside flag had gone up against the Ghanaian strikers, so... Free kick to South Korea. Another brilliant game at this World Cup. We had 3-3 earlier between Cameroon and Serbia. And I can tell you that no side had come from behind to avoid defeat, having been 2-0 down at this World Cup prior to this game. And that's what South Korea currently are doing. They've come from 2-0 down. In fairness to Cameroon, they came from 3-1 down. But having not had an attempt on target in over 180 minutes of football, well, nearly 180 minutes of football, they suddenly come up with two goals. I say Huang had that brown tape wrapped around his head. It's <laughs> fallen off. And he's just brushed it off. Clearly not very well attached by the South Korean medical staff. I hope he's OK. 2-2. Two -two. Where's your money going, Dean Ashton? You'd be hard-pressed to pick a winner at this point, I mean, you? you talk about momentum, and it's there, isn't it, for South Korea now. They're pushing Ghana back again, who have defended for most of this game, let's be honest. They've not offered a, a great deal going forward. They were just so clinical in that, in that first half. I mean, they've scored with both of their shots on target, Ghana have. But his Kudus, he loses out, and uh, Lee got stuck in but a free kick goes to Ghana to shy the halfway line Ian Dancer and Dean Ashton with you Natalie Sawyer is with us as well we'll be straight off to join Adrian Durham Joe Shannon Tony Cascarino for Brazil against Switzerland Brazil who looked pretty good in their opening game and also Portugal Uruguay tonight 7 o'clock Hugh was across Alex Crook and Leanne Sanderson with that game. Now, here's Gideon Metzer into the area. Oh, an air shot from Williams. It's hit by Kudus. And Garner are back in front. A second of the match for Mohamed Kudus. The ball sent in from the left-hand side of the box by Gideon Metzer. Inyaki Williams completely missed his kick. But it worked out well for Kudus, who could run onto it at the far post and stroke it low past the keeper. And from being 2-0 down and, and, and being 2-0 up rather and pegged back to 2-2, Ghana are back ahead with just over 20 minutes to go. It is South Korea 2, Ghana 3, Kudus with his second. I mean, it's a delightful finish, but does any defender in this game want to defend a cross? Just totally losing your attackers when the balls come in. It was missed initially by Williams but then when it came across to Kudus he was ready he was waiting and the key to this finish is making sure you keep it nice and low it's so easy just to lean back as it's coming across and flash it over the bar he doesn't he really makes sure he keeps that head over the ball left footed into the ground skipping off the surface and past the goalkeeper is a really really neat finish topsy-turvy game on talk sport just how we like it at a World Cup. 20 minutes to go. And now South Korea find themselves behind once again. Kudus with his second of the game. That's his seventh international goal. In just 20 appearances. And what can South Korea do now that the Africans have got their noses back in front? going to be Kim Moon Hwan with a throw the right back almost level with the Ghana penalty area gets it back on this near side works it in field but asking a lot of Cho who's on a hat trick remember but it's a throw that Gideon Mensah will take and credit to him for the ball across the face of goal eventually found its way through to Kudus and it's 3-2 to Ghana I mean there's been there's been some embarrassing defending, by the way, from crosses. 
in this game. I mean, to, first of all, for Williams to be completely unmarked, and then Kudush as well at the back post, that's not good enough. It wasn't a whipped cross either. It's not even as if he didn't have time to check his shoulder and know where the attacker was. It's only been dribbled in, really. And it's, Mensa. The, it's the first time that Ghana have ever scored three goals in one World Cup match. And South Korea have never achieved that either. So if they can get an, an equaliser to bring it back to 3-3, they will have scored three in a match for the very first time. There's a double change being readied by Ghana. Ato Odo is ready to perhaps make some changes to try and see this game out from this position less than 20 to go Anthony Taylor gives a free kick to South Korea inside their own half is that going to provide the changes an opportunity no because the throws already been taken South Korea with possession midway point of their own half Kim Jin Soo being pursued by Kudus who's also on a hat trick back it goes out to Kim Min Jai striding forward towards the halfway line plays it in field to Wang round the corner for Kim Moon Hwan approaching the midway point of the Ghana half on the right hand side he's got support out there Kim Moon Hwan makes moves towards the corner flag Ghana try and prevent the corner Mensa puts it up for a throw the other side of the corner flag 3-2 Ghana lead well, they've been able to get into wide positions very, very easily. The two South Korean fullbacks, Moon Kwan, Jin Su, have been really, really good at getting forwards. And here's Moon Kwan's ball in, headed out by the Ghana midfielder. It's headed out by Samed in the end. Mensah keeping it in play, tight to the touchline. Lovely dummy and cuts in field. But his ball up to halfway, comfortably intercepted by Wang early ball into midfield and here's Lee goes down under pressure and a yellow card is issued and Son is fouled and Tarek Lamptey gets himself a booking he's not on the disciplinary tightrope but Son was brought down this is about 30 yards out Dean Ashton I wonder whether Son himself might fancy a crack at goal here with the free kick I would have thought so it's very central though could be either left or right footed from this sort of angle but it's a uh, quite a long way out it would take something extremely special well it's the the man who came on and provided the cross for Cho's first goal Lee Kang in that has placed the ball down Sun is there with him but as it's to the right of century does favour a left footer and Sun of course can play with both feet but Lee Kang in definitely appears to be directing operations meantime there's a Ghanaian wall that is being set up right on the edge of the 18 yard box so it's a fair way out this free kick good 30 yards out from goal Atiziki waits on the edge of his penalty area and there's a, a proper committee meeting going on there and Anthony Taylor's being asked by Lee Kangin is the wall back 10 yards to which he's been saying yes it is get on with it Young Woo Young standing there as well. There's a draft excluder behind the Ghanaian wall in the shape of Tarek Lamptey and Dean Ashton shakes his head. Well, get on with it. I mean, it's a free kick. <laughs> so three men standing over the ball. There's three South Korean players stood about three yards in front of that Ghanaian wall. And then behind the wall, there's Lamptey lying on his backside. Lee Kangin paces back four or five paces from the ball. Son is there too with a shorter run if he's going to hit it. It's Lee Kangin, left footed, round the wall, great save. That was destined for the bottom corner and Ati Ziggy made a terrific save from Lee Kangin, but it is a corner to South Korea. Stays 3 2 Ghana. Oh, this is a really good save because of the distance out. The player can get it up and over and almost bouncing in before it goes into the back of the net and it was that half volley save from Ati Ziggy he did really well it can be difficult for goalkeepers sometimes but he managed to get his hand on it and palm it wide 15 minutes to go Lee Kang in with the corner flicked on at the near post up in the air somewhat unconvincingly from Ghana back into the box it goes 
Might drop at the edge of the area. Son Young Min gets a right footed shot away, blocked by three or four Ghana players in front of him. And it drifts out to this near touchline, which kept in play by Huang. Panic stations inside the Ghana penalty area for a moment there. Back it goes to halfway. Diagonal ball hit downfield by Kim Yong Guan. Now, right hand side, Lee Kangin's there again. Gets to the byline. Tried a shot from distance. Comes out to the edge of the area. Cleared off the line by Salisu. Kim Jin Su tried the effort, didn't get hold of it. But Salisu still had to clear it off the line with the keeper beaten. He did, and again, it's the fullbacks getting into the box from the opposite side. Kim Jin Su gets the volley. I wonder whether it's just going to go wide, actually. But Salisu doesn't know that. He gets in behind his goalkeeper, as every good defender should do to anticipate and make sure that he clears. 14 minutes to go. You're listening to Talk Sport in the World Cup. South Korea 2, Ghana 3. Ian Danter and Dean Ashton with you. Ghana 2 0 up. Take back in this second half to two apiece. Kudus then getting Ghana's third. But South Korea once again starting to ask all the questions. Party for Ghana. And the play's been brought back for a foul on Inaki Williams by Kim Young Gyeong. And a yellow card for the centre half. And a free kick to Ghana to relieve some of that pressure inside their own half of the field. And I think. Anthony Taylor's just signaled that substitutions can now happen. And both countries are making changes. And I think it's a triple change for Ghana. Daniel Kofi Kiere is coming on for Andre Ayew. He came on against Portugal. It's 3-2. And there is a change being ready by South Korea as well. I think it's a triple change for Ghana. Yellow card confirmed for Kim Jong Won, but he's not on the threat of a suspension for the final game. The South Korean player is uh, Huang Yu Jo. He's going to be coming on shortly, but Ayu is now finally coming off the field so that Kofi Kiere can replace him. Also, Dennis Adoy wants a Fulham. He's going to be coming on for Tariq Lamptey. Adoy now plays for Club Brugge in Belgium. And the change being made sees a young Wu Young come off so that Wang Guizhou can replace him. So that's a striker for a midfielder. No doubting Paolo Bento's intentions at this point for South Korea. Just over 10 minutes plus a fair old amount of stoppage time. And we're back underway with South Korea in possession at the edge of their own penalty area. Uh, Suleiman has come on as well, I should say. Uh, Kamaldine Suleiman of Red. He's come on for Jordan, are you? So both are you brothers are off. Sulemana wearing 22 is on in his place. Throw it to Ghana, sent in by Adoy, his first involvement since coming on. Kudus plays a 1 2 in midfield but runs into Huang anywhere will do to get it out of play. In fact, it took a touch off a, a Ghana player, so South Korea have the throw. To paraphrase Stingray, anything could happen in the last 10 minutes or so here. It's 3 2 to Ghana. But South Korea will be increasingly desperate to get themselves back on terms for a second time in this match. Adoy, down this near side of the right, finds Thomas Partey, he fires it back into his own half. Looking for Mensa. Now it's picked up by Samin. Square ball back to Mensa. Good ball through the halfway line to pick out Kofi Kiere out to the left hand side and a chance for Sulemana to get the ball in the box maybe and he elects to go back Garner just 
have the ball back on the halfway line. They get three two. They need to, yeah. They just try and need to, like they did in the first half after they had scored, just slow things down. Try and get the foot on the ball. Try and get Partey and Samed to just keep possession. Don't allow South Korea to get that those energy levels up again, which when they do, they're hard to contain. Alexander Dyke, who's ready to come on as well for Ghana. Played in the first match as one of three centre-halves against Portugal. South Korea with a throw into the box. It's a fairly agricultural clearance from Mo Salisu, but Ghana gets it half clear. Clipped downfield by Kudus. Kim Munhwan wins a header. Cho tries to help the ball on. Lee at the edge of the area tries to make something of it. But it's just whacked out of play by Samet. And it'll be a throw to South Korea. Left-hand side, Kim jin Su wants a target. He might try a long throw into the box here. Dummies to do that and then go short to Lee Kang-in. But he gives it away. And a chance for Inaki Williams to break downfield. Kofi Kiera has gone with him, but Inaki Williams gives it to Kofi Kiera, but his first touch is poor. And it allows South Korea to wrestle it away from him. And a slightly uncertain clearance from the left foot of Kim Seung Gyu. And Ghana suddenly had a bit of pace in attack on the counter there. They lead 3-2. Yeah, Naki Williams really positive in the way that he ran at that South Korean defence. Little touches as he ran with his toe just to keep it nice and close to him. And then played a really nice pass actually. Kofi Kera with a really poor touch he's only just come on he's not up to the speed of the game and one of those that comes right off the shin pad and uh, it's Kudus he won't get a hat-trick because he's being the player being withdrawn to allow Daiku who I just mentioned to come on let's not forget the influence that Chris Hutton has for Ghana Ato Odo is the coach but Chris Hutton's on that bench he's the technical director for Ghana and it's said that he has very much a hands-on role in assisting his coach. Kofi Kiera with a corner. There's a South Korean player gone down in a heat as he tried to win the header at the near post. It was Cho. Ball's gone behind anyway for a South Korean goal kick. Seven minutes of normal time to go. On talk sport at the World Cup. South Korea 2, Ghana 3. A result that would obviously put Ghana on three points, South Korea on one with Portugal and Uruguay, who play later. Live on Tour Sports at seven o'clock, Portugal on three points, Uruguay on one. Diagonal ball, picking out Kim moon the right back, coming forward for South Korea. Early ball into the box, poor defending, drops for Kim jin Su far post, fires it over the bar. Tried to keep it down. Frustration again for the South Korean left back, and again, a cross from out wide, goes through a forest of legs in the box with nobody getting a touch, and Kim Jin Su had the final effort. But how often has that happened, where one fullback is, is the one that's crossing the ball, the opposite fullback, and considering they're playing a back four South Korea, just shows how advanced the fullbacks are. Kim Jin Su on his left foot, looking to strike, really poor scuffing it up and over the top when that was the opportunity to at least get it on target and have the players follow in but out wide I mean they dealt really well with it in the first half Garner the crosses that were coming in not this half they've been all over the place Dean Ashton alongside me Ian Danter on commentary as the ball set down the left hand side by Sulemana tries to win a corner kick and Inaki Williams in the end wins a throw in for Garner They're in no hurry to take it as they try and run a few seconds down on the clock. Left back Mensa to take it. Looking for an option. Kofi Kier has come short. Williams is there too. And Sulemana. Sulemana trying to protect the ball by the corner flag. Remember it's 85 minutes gone, not 95. But Ghana then just whack the ball into their own supporters on the far side to stop South Korea launching a counter attack. Players being offered up all around the stands at Education City. Now it's the 
the South Koreans mostly who are hoping that their prayers get answered. The Ghanaians 15 minutes or so ago thinking this match was slipping from their grasp. Still plenty of time to go, there'll be plenty of added time I imagine as well. Sun Jung Min out to Kim Jin Soo on the left hand side for South Korea. Midway point of the Ghana half. 3-2 Ghana lead if you're just tuning into Talk Sport. Lee with a lovely crossfield pass to pick out Kim Moon Hwan. The right back just tosses a ball into the area. Up go the heads and it's headed well wide in the end. And it's Kim Jin Soo in there again, <laughs> the left back. He's desperate to score, isn't he? Goal kick Ghana, 3-2 they lead. Oh, it's brilliant. It really is. Kim Moon Hwan. On the right hand side, the right full back again, just clipping that one up to be attacked. Was it Cho? No. Wee Joe? No. It's the little left full back, Jin Su, that's trying to get up and head that in at the back post and just didn't time it right. Well, now Gideon Mentz has gone down inside his own penalty area with a bit of cramp. So across has come Daniel Amate to do the honours and put Mensa through a bit of agony, but. The physios have come on, so he's going to have to go off. We've seen the replays of all the goals on our monitors as we wait for play to restart. Garner in front, 2-0 at half-time, two goals from Salisu and Kudus. But a brace of headers from Cho for South Korea. Had them level on the hour, only for Kudus to go forward and strike a lovely true left-footed shot home to restore Garner's lead. And they hang on to that 3-2 lead. But it's going to be a fair old chunk of added time. The magic sprays being applied to the ankles of Gideon Mensa. And more sombre faces in the crowd, actually from both nations. A lot of Ghana fans who know that this job isn't done quite yet, Dean Ashton. No, it, it's got the feeling, hasn't it, that there's still a little bit of drama left in this game it's, it's it's too open almost to to not have chances created it's just whether they can take them baba Rahman, who's on loan at reading from chelsea is going to be on for mensa i think he's gone off the field but Rahman's come on and that's that for gideon mensa so Rahman, who somehow is still on chelsea's books come on left back for left back right for right switch from Ato Odo we are now 88 minutes gone on talk sport in the World Cup but there's going to be a well we sort of play um, World Cup stop his time lottery now don't we Dean after we sort of wonder <laughs> how much we're going to have well I mean we've had a few injuries haven't we a couple of head injuries so are we edging towards double figures do you think well and we had that free kick that took about four minutes to take <laughs> it's whether anthony taylor's taken that into consideration throw it to south korea inside their own half kim jin su lobs it back in it goes back to the goalkeeper and kim seung yu sends it out to the other fullback on the far side the right kim moon hwan infield for wang now kim min jai back for his goalkeeper has now stood outside his penalty area Kim Yung Guan looks for Lee just over the halfway line squares it back into the centre circle for Huang Kim Moon Huang is out ready on the right hand side another ball to toss into the area heads go up Salisu gets it half clear Kim Jin Su on the scene once again deep ball to the far post over everybody's head but it'll be collected by Kim Moon Hwan right hand side of the area looking to jockey his way past Kofi Kieran ball into the near post and headed behind for a corner kick and it was Baba Rahman diving in at his near post to stop the ball getting in front of goal it's a corner to South Korea 3-2 Ghana lead yeah the two fullbacks have been absolutely brilliant for South Korea they've been always available they're getting in the box from the opposite side it's a great ball in as well from Kim Moon Hwan and you're right, it was good defending because there was some real pace on that cross to be able to head that over. Babaraman, he did well not to put it in his own net. We're into the 90th minute. Lee with a corner for South Korea. Headed away at the near post by Kofi Kiere. Comes back out to the right-hand side and Lee Kang in. Tosses the ball back into the box from a deeper area. Headed out by Suleimana for Ghana. 
edging towards added time. Ten minutes of added time are into that now on Talks Ball. Cross to the far post. Son Jong Min onto his right, blocked on his way to goal. Comes out to Lee. His shot is blocked. Ghana throwing bodies in front of everything at the start of added time to preserve this lead. And now the ball breaks on halfway. And the ball's kept away by Nyaki Williams. And South Korea will come again. <laughs> you just saw one diving Ghanaian defender and then another one head first at the, the second shot. Son Jung Min cuts in from the left-hand side. Midway point of the Ghana half. 3-2 to Ghana. In added time on Talk Sport. Thrilling stuff at Education City. Kim Moon Hwan with a deep ball to the far post. Kept in play by Kim Jin Soo. Lobs it across the area. Nodded down at the far post. But Ati Zigi, the Ghana keeper, pounces and lays on top of the ball just to kill a few seconds. And Ghana repel that attack. Stays 3-2 to the Black Stars. They're not getting out at all, though, are they, Ghana? The, uh, the two full-backs are really narrow. Sulemana, Kofikir is not getting out to the full-back, so they're just able to keep crossing it in. South 16, Korea. 16 attempts on goal by South Korea to Ghana's seven. And there were two efforts a moment or so ago. Brilliantly blocked. And the big man Kim Min Jai is coming off. And they're throwing on... Kwon Kyung Won, who plays for Gamba Osaka in Japan, played all over Asia. Kwon wearing number 20. It's a centre half for a centre half, but I think he's just going to go and join in <laughs> whenever they get set pieces up front. Yeah. Balls inside the South Korea half. They're trying to head it towards halfway. Ghana win it back. Brought in field strongly by Thomas Partey, who's still out there, still trying to patrol that, mat that midfield. Amate inside his own half, gives the ball back to Daiku. Daiku with a long ball downfield. Kwon gets involved, there was an offside flag up against Inaki Williams. And a free kick to South Korea, we played two minutes of the minimum ten that Anthony Taylor has added on here, on Talk Sport, live from Doha at the World Cup. Six goals earlier today between Cameroon and Serbia, five goals here. What have we got left in these minutes of added time? Lee Kangin drifting towards the edge of the area for South Korea, floats it out to Song Jong Min, left-hand corner of the box, looking to get past his man, wins a corner off Adoy. South Korea corner, 3-2 Ghana lead. Unbelievable how narrow Ghana are as a defence, considering they've got five of them at the back. Within the width of the penalty area, all that space out wide. They've got to go for it, South Korea. Son with the corner, in front of goal, headed away brilliantly by Inaki Williams, telling his players to get out now. Balls back on halfway with Kim Munhwan. Lee Kangin has it right-hand side, just drills the ball diagonally. Out to the left-hand side and finds Son Jung Min. Faced up by Adoy once more. Rolls it to Cho. Cho makes room for a shot, does he? No, he's brilliantly blocked by Adoy. Comes out to Son again. Left-hand side of the area. Two Ghana players converge on him. So he runs out towards the touchline. Keeps it in play. And works it in field really well. And here's Cho, left-hand side of the box. Drives it into the near post. And Ati Ziggy turns it round for a corner kick to South Korea and Ati Ziggy had to be very very swift to turn that behind no he was nice and alert it's his near post as Cho hits it towards the near post top corner got a bit of cramp in the process with that swinging left foot Lee Kang in with the latest corner headed out to the edge of the area Huang has to let the ball bounce over his head before he can retrieve it and he was caught late and it's a free kick to South Korea four and a half minutes of added time have gone. Remember, a minimum of 10 were added on. Ghana are hanging on here. Desperate for this 3-2 win. But the desperation is equal from the South Koreans to get themselves level. Lee with the latest free kick into the box. Headed up and out by two or three Ghana players going for the same ball. Out to the right-hand side. Clips up to the edge of the area. Anywhere will do for Ghana. Nobody in a white shirt on halfway. And so Lee 
can collect it for South Korea. Plays it down the near side, the left to Kim Jin Soo. Lovely early ball. Up went Cho, just didn't connect with the header. Adoy heads it clear for Ghana. Wave after wave after wave after South Korean attacks. Here comes another cross into the area. Drifts out to the far side. Kept in play brilliantly by Lee Kang in. Swirling left for the cross. Kim Jin Soo heads it up in the area. And it's cleared away. Back out to the South Korean right hand side. It's incessant from South Korea. Another ball into the box. Headed across the face of goal. So won't get there. Punched out to the left. Kim Jin Soo. Oh, there's a push on a Ghana player. Anthony Taylor spotted a foul. And it's a free kick to Ghana. This is unbelievable stuff. Proper rear guard action from Ghana to preserve this 3-2 lead on Talk Sport. Oh, they're so deep. I mean, about four players ended up in the back of the net there. Zati Ziggy punches it away. Cho was flying in there. Amate. Daiku. Absolute desperation in the defensive line there. Like they used to say in those cowboy films, circle the wagons. It's going to be pressure, pressure, pressure. Although there's just a break whilst Inaki Williams. Is it Inaki Williams who's getting some treatment down there? Is it Amate? It's Amate actually who's having a bit of free spray on his left knee. There's just more time that'll be added on though. Seeing a replay again of that smart save from Cho who's looking for a hat trick. Ati Ziggy just had to pat it away at his near post. Fiercely struck. And eventually it'll be a free kick for Ghana. Seven minutes of the minimum ten have elapsed at Education City. Dean Ashton and Ian Danter with you live in Doha on TalkSport at the World Cup. Ghana leading 3-2. Williams goes down saying he's injured, but Anthony Taylor says, quite the contrary, you gave away the free kick which South Korea now take. Now Kwon plays it left for Kim jong won Son Jong-min dropping very deep now. Trying to influence matters. The Spurs star, the talisman of South Korea. Can he come up with something in these dying moments? Lee Kang-in, left-hand side for South Korea. Midway point of the Ghana half. Ghana hanging on to this 3-2 lead. Tossed into the area from the left hand side won't find its target but it comes back to Huang and Kwon on halfway the goalkeeper is practically at the edge of the centre circle as the last defender for South Korea as Kim Jung Kwon hits a diagonal ball brilliantly controlled on the far side chance to work the ball into the box for South Korea there's plenty of red shirts waiting for a cross in it comes, deep to the far post. Kim Jin Soo across the face of goal. Headed up and out by Daiku. Further clear by Suleimana. But South Korea win it back. Eight minutes gone of added time. South Korea come forward again. Diagonal ball forward. Kim Jin Soo there again. Heads it into the area. Cleared out as far as Lee Kang in. Left footed ball. Lovely cross. Wouldn't quite find show at the far post drifts out to the far side and Kim Moon Hwan down the right hand side of the area now clips it in to the area oh a horrible hack clearance but it goes behind Daiku didn't know much about that it's a South Korean corner 3-2 Ghana seconds remaining oh it's brilliant I mean the, the amount of crosses that Ghana are having to deal with Lee Kang in with this corner They've not sent the goalkeeper up, not just yet. Left-footed in, swinger. Heads go up, well cleared by the Ghanaian defence, but Kim Moon Hwan gets for the loose ball first. Huang, diagonal ball down the left-hand side of the box, headed away, and out to play for a throw down this left-hand side for Na Sang Ho. Tries to get the throw back, does so. Son Jung Min, ball deflected for the cross into the box, more desperate defending. Lee Kang in, left footed effort, whipped over the bar. And it's a goal kick to Ghana. He saw the headlines there, Lee Kang in. I thought he could whip it towards goal from the right hand corner of the box. But he got right underneath it. Yeah. 
that's rule number one when you're trying to exert pressure like they have done in the last five or six minutes is do not give them an easy out and that's what it was uh, speculative shot from 25 yards when you've got five or six red shirts in the box just keep it in there we played the 10 minutes of minimum added time it's now down to Anthony Taylor as to how much further to add Ghana 3-2 up on South Korea the ball's on halfway one last chance maybe for South Korea to send it forward still in their own half though Kim Young Kwon sends it on to halfway Huang needs an option square ball is on to Kwon who piles forward the centre half goes for goal it deflects off a Ghana player corner kick to South Korea right at the end at 3-2 to Ghana what can they do with what should be the final kick the referee's whistle has gone and the South Koreans can't believe it Paolo Bento's raced out to Anthony Taylor because he wouldn't allow the corner to be taken but Anthony Taylor says that's that Ghana have won by three goals to two they've clung on for three precious World Cup points and a red card for Paolo Bento for getting right in the face of Anthony Taylor we thought there would be a South Korean corner but Anthony Taylor blew for full time Bento raced out and is sent off and will not be on the touchline when he faces his own country Portugal in the third game and Ghana having lost to Portugal by three goals to two have now beaten South Korea by three goals to two and Paolo Bento is still at it remonstrating with Anthony Taylor and Anthony Taylor's trying not to look him in the eye meantime a shake of the hand for George Parting from Paolo Bento but at the eye of his rage Paolo Bento is the English referee that said time was up when he felt there was more to play what a game at Education City Ghana somehow 2-0 up after being dominated Korea got it back to 2-2 but Mohamed Kudus of Ajax struck the decisive blow full time at Education City another dramatic World Cup match controversy at the end too it finished South Korea 2 Ghana 3